All right, game three. They're putting they're putting their eggs in the in the Masu basket, saying, you know what? If we're gonna win this tournament, we're gonna need you at some point. I actually respect this, even if it's not your best way of winning the match. And especially with Ash being banned, you can see that Genji knows that this is the red one ban. Guys, this is the most important pick. It's not this one. Yone's fine. Yone's very very strong, but there are answers. All right, there's a lot of mid lane picks that are fine. Ash is head and shoulders above everyone else, especially for FlyQuest, who needs to be in this position. Now, this is a huge, huge flex. Uh, Kaisa being used against Silas. There is a couple of things worth mentioning. When Silas is trying to turn this on, he gains no benefit from plasma stacks, and he needs to let his teammates set him up. He can use his own as well, auto attacks and whatnot, to get the marks. Much harder for him to fly around the fight than for Kaisa to do it. And no real additional benefit a apart from a large AP ratio and being able to jump into the back and maybe set up to assassinate. That said, can you get more done as the Kaisa in this matchup where you're saying, I can deal a lot of damage up front, one-to-one -one against you, and are we actually going to play for that inside-out, focus-around mid-lane strategy? We did flex Kaisa, and then we picked Zeri, the idea that we want to outscale you always. Every single game, we need to be bigger than you. We need to be able to take the fight when you bring it to us game one uh they got it absolutely in spades game two they forced a couple plays where the script looked a little bit more favorable than they thought it might have been and you saw them biting off more than they can chew you don't have that this game all right so they go and they pick zeri over the top for the sake of winning one series i don't like it for the sake of winning world championships i love it it's not that I don't like it. I love it because you need Masu, not just this year, but next year as well. But for the rest of this tournament, I want you to be confident enough that you are world class, that we can put you on a carry. We know that you need to level up. So let's give you the opportunity. In a one game set, you don't ever do it. But in a series, you can say, hey, we've got time. Give you, feed you. Try to get you more confidence. Let's try to get... His Ezreal was not bad that game. All right, the problem was how much we gave up uh, in the lane swaps versus Ash. Jax, Ash versus Renekton, that's a loss every single time. All right, now the thing that they don't have for their team that they normally have with Skarner is a shield. Normally they have a control mage to partner here saying, hey, come to us, come to us, we'll take this fight. But you're not going to get that because of this pig right here. Ezreal being picked up by Pays means that they know that they don't need to take any fight, that they're just going to sit back, wait for the fight to come to them, blow it up in response. This is like the comp that FlyQuest used to beat Team Liquid. Come to us, come to us, come to us. I'm going to I'm going to stone one of your big spells. I'm going to I'm going to counter pick ultimates. I'm going to play Vanguard front to back, maybe even close the door on this side. The whole time Ezreal's going to be super solid. Early game positions, we'll see. It looks like the champions are, the players are already clicking. It'll be interesting to see where they pulled that back, whether or not they had any sights pulled in. All right, we're, we're coming back live, 138. We've got the lanes, two versus two. I love this. It's going to be difficult with Braum Ezreal. Ezreal deals a sneaky amount of damage. People always sleep on how much damage Ezreal does. When you full stack that Q, and you can do it off the minions, that stacking attack speed means that you have a large advantage, and you can see that they're leveraging it right now. Braum, strongest level one in the game. Ezreal, sneaky, sneaky top 10 AD in the game for early game, early game damage. And when it comes to a protracted fight, is actually in a really good spot. All right, quad spraying against the Raptors to get some information about the pathing. Occasionally, if done perfectly, you can even stop a champion like Amumu or Lee Sin from latching onto that camp, but not going to happen this game with a Sejuani. Uh, but Quad showing that, hey, I can, I can just hit here. It's going to stack up my passive energy while also get me some information about what the, what the Sejuani is up to, if, even if we don't have that ward. Now, Urgot, counterpick into Renekton. We've seen Bwipo super happy to play this. He's going to go and proxy into the other side now that they know that we have Sejuani on the other side. Now, does Skarner come to, to match this? This is a 3v2 dive. They have not hit level 3 yet, but they're going to hit... Shortly, we see a teleport right in response. We get a knockup, multiple procs. No one gets to the fourth proc. They might be able to take this. Whippo coming down after taking that fr first proxy. He did come a little bit less healthy. Boosie, you got to step. You got to front for your man. They go for it. Pace is trying to limit test. They're going to get him. Flash forward. There's barrier. Knockup, double kill. Boom! 
This was all possible because of Bwipo's counterpick into Renekton, allowing him to proxy. He gets access to that wave first, which means he can come teleport. Renekton cannot even get close to this fight, and if he did, he'd be losing in the top lane. So well done by them. A little bit scary. We're definitely sweating right there. Oh, whether or not the Bwipo had overstepped even just a tiny bit. Paves trying to get every last bit, but this is huge that Ezreal is going to springboard ahead of Kaisa now. Busio trying to sit in. You wait, you wait. You see how he steps to the side right there? The moment he steps to the side is when Sejuani dives in. So Rakan was trying to block the Q dive from Sejuani. Sejuani waits until Rakan steps forward to block any other damage and then goes for the Q so that they can try to get that damage. But Masu staying healthy in this fight is the key. Try to get them to overcommit. We're going to play for Masu. We're going to play for Quad all series long. Yeah, that's a world champion Rakan right there. Whipple with the big smile. Best smile in the league, don't you think? All right. Let him be happy. Nuke Duck, keep on processing. I love you, Nuke Duck. That is the face of a coach that is still processing. Again, you do... How do I put this? I'll take a Phil Jackson quote. You stop becoming a success at the moment that you stop performing su successful actions. That's it. If you weigh yourself on like, oh, the thing that I did that went right, then that's all you'll ever be. You'll, you'll only be the apex of the accomplishments you have ever had in your life. Whereas if you're constantly evolving, constantly looking for what's next, then you will constantly be climbing to new heights. That is super promising, guys. If you're an NA fan, you should be more excited than you've ever been. Team Liquid raised the bar in an, in NA. And then they raised it on themselves saying, hey, you know, we've done it to this level. We can actually continue and go higher. That forced FlyQuest to evolve and play at that level. FlyQuest has the best Giga Brains. Hashtag Giga Gaming Academy. Make, make sure you guys check out the website. Because we're going to be doing specials all, all worlds long. All right. We want to. And, and you know what, guys? If FlyQuest wins the series, we're going to give away 10. We're going to give away 10. Esports scholarships, if you guys want it, make sure you check out www.gigagamingacademy.com. More details. This is the most exciting NA excited NA fans should be. You're playing great. You're playing against the world favorites for this tournament, and you're giving them a run for your money. The coaching staff knows what's up. Papa Smithy has seen it work in Korea, and he has rebuilt it in the image of the great Korean teams and saying, "Hey, this is what we can do. We can be even better." There's another level. It's not just about being a good NA team. Let's be a good Worlds team. We want to continue putting putting power into Masu's hands to show him that he's strong, that we believe. It's not just that he's a rookie. He's capable. Two-step dive here versus Solo Ezreal. Absolutely love it. Dodge. Get out. Plate. Done. Braum gets nothing. He's going to pick up kindling here on the rest of this minions he can go for a little a little bit of a chunk but it's going to cost nothing it's just going to get the guardian proc meanwhile skarner's playing up i love what FlyQuest is doing saying all right you know what we have a read all these eastern teams especially the korean teams six minutes they're over committing to the void grubs we're going to give them void grubs every single time and we're going to make plays proactively elsewhere on the map now, when you do that, Whippo, you got to pull back, right? Your weak side. If your team is saying, hey, we're going to be strong here, we're going to be strong here, we're showing numbers in mid, and we just made a play and committed a lot of our HP in bottom, you know Sejuani wasn't there for any of it. Where's the Sejuani? Sejuani's killing the Void Grubs. You know that Renekton has the ability to gap close and get those stuns off, especially with these modal items, right? Love, love, love modal items in the top lane. Plated Steel Caps not only plays into your matchup, to defend against a lot of the damage, but it gives you that speed that allows you to set up and make plays for the rest of your team when the time comes. And in an environment where there's going to be a lot of swapping, move speed is at a premium. Quad. Small, small CS lead for himself. But it looks like he... Uh, maybe they're just trading blow for blow. Trovi's defending the, the turret just fine. Eight minutes into the game. Real quick, do you guys know? Is that a cannon wave without looking at the minions? Remember, 234, 537, 830. So we have the cannons coming up in the next wave. So this is a moment that we want to see a lot of these waves. When you look at the one, two, three balance of waves, 
right? No cannon, no cannon, cannon. This is the pattern all the way up to 15 minutes into game, and then 20, 25 minutes, it's every other wave is a cannon, right? The odd waves. Do, what do you have set up for yourself when cannons arrive? When cannons arrive is the most amount of time that you can step away from your lane because it takes the enemy laners the longest to chew through them. So what can you do in those windows? Or conversely, if you expect that the other team is going to work it, how much damage can you deal to a turret? Which resources do you need to allocate to it to make sure that you get the most with that cannon hitting a turret? So they're playing aggressively here cannons up they know that if they can push them out at all that they're going to have a freeze for themselves so they end up trying to go for a little bit of chunk damage Ezreal gets chipped down has to use a little bit more mana ultimate being used and it hits Masu in the face that's going to be a tremendous chunk but this is a 3-0 Kaisa guys so Kaisa it's Kaisa's prerogative to step forward and take the maximum here Ezreal's 0-2 has no barrier flashes up so I'd like to see them fight for it and hold this freeze, and I'd like to see Inspired play a little bit more to this side. You do not need to play to Bwipo. I want zero jungle attention to Bwipo in this entire series, really. Until until it's, until it's, you've made it apparent that you're never going to put any attention onto him, and you feel like you can exploit a hasty dive onto him, right? He, especially in a champion like Urgot, maybe, maybe you get that sort of play, but it has to be under turret, right? You have to be able to backflip someone when they go for that dive nice job by quad stepping forward into the queue from silas saying i can dodge into this to deal maximum amount of damage because i know that you're low on cooldowns and you're stepping back silas notoriously has to trade off this all the time have to use your hp and mana bar as a resource and trade it into your opponents this conqueror in particular right you need to be able to throw your body weight into the fight and get extra access to the, to the W in the fight. You kind of see this Conqueror paired up with four or five points of W because you want to jump into the fights and you want maximum effectiveness on this. You see that he's only putting one point in Q. Another reason why Quad doesn't mind stepping forward. Again, defending the, you see that, defending the minion, saying, I know that you want to dash forward, you want to use your W on this minion. I'm going to step forward and start ripping AoE damage into you, which is going to accomplish two things. One, you I know you need to back, so it gives me a faster push. I also know that you want this minion, so I'm going to make sure that I'm chunking you back. This is expertly played by Quad right now. I'll be really interested to see what kind of ability he goes into. This early Merc Treads allows him to make some of those plays. You get to defend against the long distance spells from Ezreal at some point, not the Q, obviously. But Braum, CC, Chain CC, Chain CC, stun from Renekton. If you can get away from the second one, maybe you don't get Chain CC'd. Now, Busio's deflecting against this. This might just be like a little nod, like, hey, we're here. We're looking, are we actually going to try to fight for one? Sometimes they'll send Inspired into the situation, try to smite away one. Or you say, okay, you guys can have six. That's fine, but we are never going to relinquish the gold lead. We're going to let you take the six grubs, but now we're going to put our pedal to the metal. So this is the time. Anytime you give away six grubs, but you have a gold lead, you have to go forward, 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 and nothing but forward. Because the moment you allow them onto your turrets, the moment that you try to play defensively and try to catch up to them, they're going to come back and hit your turrets harder than you can hit them. And they're going to, it's their job to move away from you now. They have no gold lead. They have to rotate away from the action. They have to go weak side. They have to sp split push and try to get whatever action they can. Oh, you Bwipo walking into the Ezreal ult, but it's going to be enough. That was a dash forward. Ultimate used from Chovy. Did he... I didn't see, I didn't see which one he used. If they think they outscale, they're just saying, you know what? We'll sit back. Yeah, you can have the grubs, but we're just going to keep farming on the double AD carry, and we'll get to a point where you can't contest us in the 5v5. The question is, was their read right? Because Gen G does have some powerful scaling themselves, and of course, are masters in that 5v5. It's, uh, I like this position here. Fight for everything. You have the gold lead. Take the position for everything. Renekton getting bullied by Zeri. Uh, it's nice to put this back under Renekton after what happened to Bwipo in last game. Busio and Inspired, all right, Rakan and Skarner expect them to mask back and forth and cover wherever the play. Now, we haven't really spoken about it today, but something that FlyQuest does is what we'll call Pendulum Macro, where they basically swing from side to side, and it makes sense. You generally want to play stronger on the side that your jungler is on. Your jungler would like to play on the side that you're trying to be aggressive on. 
Your jungler wants to play on the side that has camps. So what they do, they basically, rather than rush through all the camps from here on out in the rest of the game, they tend to not send Skarner on power clears, but instead say, hey, we'd like to be aggressive on this side. Look at these wards, two people in mid, Zeri's playing aggressively while Skarner's on this side of the map. It all makes sense. This is all beautiful macro. Now they're going to swing back and turn it back around and say, let's go back over to this side. We've got our red buff. Skarner can pick up camps. We'll play for here and play for here. And they're going to give back what they gained in the top side. Because they got a good push off in the top side, there will be very little punish. This is super advanced macro. We'll see whether or not a team comes up with a great answer to it. Usually it means overloading in preparation for a play. We have seen uh, a Korean team basically set up a trap right here uh, after Rift Herald was taken and say, hey, if you want to come and take Rift Herald and push it onto this side of the map, go for it. The weakness is this plan that they did. They put it into play while Rift Herald was on the map. It looks like someone's calling to defend and pick up this wave, which goes against what they would normally pick up. Right? The, it doesn't look like they want this fight. They're going to allow it to go. But now they're not that strong anywhere. Bwipo's going to go and push this turret. We're going to expect to see mid prio. But now you're giving something back. You're giving them a lot. You have to be much more proactive. I don't like that they're sending quad to just go defend and pick up a wave. Uh, unless they can get Bwipo access to this turret where he can just burst it down before anything else happens. Good job. They dodge the first three skill shots. We've spoken about this in team fight positioning. Uh, one of the things that Korean and Chinese teams do is they look for the magic number of three. If you can dodge three skill shots going into a fight, you can take the fight. Right? You try to go plus three on cooldowns, whatever it is. And if it's uh, ults and summoner spells, then they'll just go for it anyways. They don't care whether or not they're down a player as long as they have access to more fight changing effects. All right, so remember when we said that they were going to give this side, go over here, they push this side, Whipple gets turret, they've got mid lane prio, they get the dragon. This is their prize. They're going to do this again. They're going to swap back. Enemy team tends to over defend. This is what you're trying to exploit with this macro strategy. We come to dragon. We expect you to come over here to defend, but we're faster than you. We're bigger than you. Now we're going to cycle back onto the other side and swing back and try to take this because if you show any amount of extra defense here, then we're actually stronger than you on the other side of the map. If you use any number of wards, any number of champions, if we can move first and move to the top lane before you do, we win this exchange. So expect this Kaisa to continue up on this side. Zeri's going to come back over here or go to mid. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind if they just went mid it looks like they're going to go pick up a wave for kaisa in mid first because bwipo has one more wave to touch this is an important thing to do right because bwipo is pushing this wave he's going to be 15 seconds later on the recall so you just have to take a moment reset the waves it looks like they might come back but expect skarner to come back over to this side and again four or five people on this side of the map renekton's not a threat on the bot side this is the fly quest pattern they are playing fantastic league of legends love the strategy I'm pumped, guys. This game's looking pretty good. They're going to expand on their lead right here. I don't expect them to give up any more ob objectives. They're going to take every fight from here on out. They've got Stridebreaker picked up on Zeri. I have not seen I have not seen Stridebreaker Zeri, I don't think. It does splash. And it gives you the slow to make sure that you're a little bit better at self-peeling. It also makes you a little bit better to dive in and press your R and still go for the Stridebreaker. That said... It's uh, it's scary anytime Zeri gets into low range. What they may be saying is, hey, I dare you to try to dive to me. You don't have enough second gap closers. You have one, you have dash forward, you have E1, E2, you have E1, E2, you have a dash onto one of these guys. But if you do, that means that you're leaving Ezreal alone and undefended. So Zeri is saying, I dare you to dive onto me. I dare you to take this. I'm going to pull it back away from you. I'm going to drop the fight away. All right, the pendulum swings. They go from top to bottom. They looked for a second like they may uh, drop Zeri back to go just pick up this buff. But no, Bwipo, you can't throw that. That's a big miss. All right, so they're losing a lot of extra time here because of this extra time invested, and they are going to try to just get this uh, kill onto the Zeri. But that extra time investment means that this Rift Herald is going to break into this lane, and they're going to go for a second push maybe. Tight curl. Uh, because of that extra time expended, they're able to get more. Now, FlyQuest might say, hey, we can actually take this flash forward, flash W. They don't. They opt not to do it for it. They actually could have gotten it. Braum had no cooldown, they, and they don't have Renekton coming in. That could have been a flash W into ultimate, but instead they say, 
Chovy, we can punish? No, we can't punish. We are strong on this side. Whippo's going to take this fight for as long as possible because Chovy cannot fight this back. They are strong on this side. Flash forward. Beautiful. Repositioning himself. It's not going to be enough to get him out, but Rakan's trying to stretch. Please don't have a nightmare like in game two. But he is going to block. Strong side, guys. Pendulum macro. All right. Bait the fight. This is the one. You've gotten it. They baited back in. Chovy went in for this. You can pull him back, but you don't have the shields that you normally do. You have to be able to consolidate that fight. Everyone needs to be in position. If you can't do it, then you cannot call for that. Too much. You've allowed them too much time to get back into a defensive position. Genji's back in the game. No real big prizes, though. So all they're getting is the kill. It's not that big of a deal, but it means that you don't get that play on turret. You don't get to punish Chovy. Uh, this is a huge cooldown, though. All right, expect them to try to hunt after this flash. I like the side to side, but if you continuously do side to side and the other team picks up on it as a tendency, then you will see side to side full defense where they can say, hey, let's preemptively full defend, knowing that they're going to come here on, on strong as a strong side play and maybe punish a play. That's exactly what they got right there. So good adaptation from Gen G. Might, it might have just been a call in the moment. Uh, it has never been their strength to do that if there's any way that these teams that this team ever loses it's too high tempo proactive play keep chovy down try to get him to overcommit for a wave this is how this team has has ever lost right so have they learned from it have they come up with a good adaptation we'll see has a slight level advantage over quads which means that contesting this dragon maybe flight quest just say we'll concede it they all right zeri's huge obstacle for stride breaker wow a little bit of extra wave clear coming in from the pick you, you used to see titanic hydra back in the day titanic hydra with runon's hurricane they called it the helicopter build chovy's picking the fight here quad or a little bit overextended but this is a grasp this is a grasp zeri look at him dicing on the end of the fight i love this level of confidence saying hey let me kite laterally we can take the rest of this fight all right we're just picking a sejuani be careful get ready to turn back on the on the front on the backliners you cannot take too much you see that reposition there Moss who's feeling like he's the strongest in the fight they can continue this fight Renekton just 1v1 to the Urgot though this has to be consolid, uh, concise you have to take this fight every every motion needs to be together because you better believe that Sejuani is getting ready to turn back onto them Ezreal is the best champion in this game in the game when you get into this spot cutting backwards still throwing spells back into them getting a little bit low on mana though Lucio inspired might say hey we can take this but Sejuani being full um, in this sort of game where you're going to have a lot of protracted fights and a lot of front to back you see the, the value of the warmog sejuani was able to kite back buy themselves some extra health come back into the fight and now they're full health and they can take the dragon off that renekton's huge against urgot right now look at this which means that in these extended fights where FlyQuest can keep hitting... Urgot just picked up his item, though. It's about as big as you can expect him to get to during this game. I love that he's the one picking up Black Cleaver uh, to allow the rest of the team to fight. We have... Okay, so we're going the, the highest DPS build from Kaisa, saying it's going to be a front-to-back front, of, front to back battle. Love the Rage Blade here, because it's best in that situation where you're going to have this long, protracted siege, where you're going to have multiple chances to get five plasma stacks into your teammates. Hold on, did Busio found a punish here? They caught Lehen stepping forward for a ward. They're going to get a good chunk of damage, but it is Brahm, so it's going to be fairly inconsequential. Now, damage profile is going to be pretty good also with the on-hit route from, from Kaisa. A little bit more magic damage from from that spot. Are they going to continue with it? And if they go for the full AP build, is it going to be an Abyssal Mask? That fight wasn't even close. I guess maybe it was a close. But Steric's Gage is always going to pop in a, in a way that means that Urgot ult is going to be inconsequential. As long as you can con continue the fight. If Urgot can zone him off and play off of it, then you're going to be okay. Alright, Blasting Wand's up. Is this going to be Nashard's Tooth, or is he going straight into... I mean, we're we're going to assume it's Nash's Tooth because it's going to give you both worlds, right? It's going to give you the on hit for the front to back, and it's also going to give you extra AP to go into something like a Crypt Boom later. So does this mean that Urgot, I mean, it feels kind of weird to ever put something like an Abyssal Mask on an Urgot. It looks like we might actually get a Sterics Gauge here. I generally hate Sterics Gauge from Skarner second. Very solo queue build to go Heart Steel into Sterics Gauge. Uh, when you do that... 
Yes, it is the most solo power in a 2v2 skirmish that you can get on that champion. But that's not always what you're looking for, right? Sometimes you just need to be the biggest trunk in the middle of the fight. Now, Lockett is going to get outscaled. And the fact that there's two of them here means that Gen G is sort of afraid of the upfront in the front in the fight. But because they went double Lockett, you can outscale this team. So expect everything else to be as much value for front to back fighting as possible. For the rest of the builds, everything that they do going forward, it's all going to be in this front to back metric. That means we're expecting something like Mortal Reminder right here. This is going to be Nasher's Tooth into something like Crypt Bloom. Uh, I don't know if we get an Abyssal Mask, but this would be the Abyssal Mask if we if we want to get it. Some amount of magic damage from the Skarner and from the Zeri and a significant amount from the Kai'Sa. Uh, it will also give you good defenses against a lot of the chip damage, the upfront splash from Ezreal when he goes for WE. Whippo, I don't know if you wanted that. A chain CC. Seric's gauge is wasted. Beautifully done by the two of them. And that's a teleport down. But that's a lot of cooldowns down. They can take this fight. Continue, quad. Continue, 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 continue. There's no red buff. This is the problem. No, they called it off. They said we can't do anything. We're going to give too much. If we go any further, then we're giving up Baron. Hmm, Whippo, Whippo, Whippo. Look at this. What is this? Is this going to be the Abyssal Mask? Is he saying, I'm going to buy it for the team? Hey, look, I'm I'm out of this game. I'm not going to carry anymore. It's my job to apply, apply shred and shred as much as possible. Maybe that means that he's the one that brings the anti-heal as well. Just the executioner's calling, right? Not, nothing else. Don't even go mortal reminder, or, or you know, maybe you go chem, chem, um, whatever, chem punk chain sword. Later, would be fine, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is either QSS to get out of stuns, uh, or if it's going to just be that abyssal mask and say, hey, this is my job for the rest of the fight. Love how aggressively Quad is playing. Look at that kiting. In small spaces, they're able to retake the fight. Look at this teleport. Are they able to redraw the line of skirmish? Busio, uh, they try to say, hey, let's go straight on to Chovy. To, instead of peeling the fight first, ends up just layering his R on the teleport, which is too slow. It's too slow, guys. So that's a mistake in the fight. Largely, largely this is because of how small the Urgot is. But they had enough going into that fight that Rakan could have gone forward, peeled some, and then come back, jumped on, and had the rest of the team. The call to land on the teleport is fine. But you can't do it if your whole team's getting ripped into on, on the backside, right? That teleport channel is not the same two-second ch channel that it was before. Kaisa front to back damage. They get the pick. They're going to go front. They're going to rip them apart now. They're going too much into the into Skarner. This is a win. We caught them going for too much. This is a win. They don't have a wave, or do they? Can't see the minimap anymore. Trovi's going to try his best. You bring everybody here. Do not send anyone to a side lane. All right, he's going to take chips. Urgot's going to try to try to stop him here. Nice. There you go. That's the ultimate. He's going to wait and go to the other side. Wait till he shows. He has his ultimate in three seconds. Done. Done. And this is a delayed death, guys. He, all right. He should not have cast that right away. Small, small thing. But you want to wait. You want to wait as long as possible. It's a small, tiny, tiny thing. But it, it shows that our mind might be in there. Oh, my God. I got the kill. I got the kill. Let me take the kill. These guys, you've seen it, especially from the Eastern teams. Sometimes you delay the kill, and it's better because you want an extra three seconds, an extra five seconds. It's not going to matter right now because the respawn's going to come up. And maybe that's deliberate. And if it's deliberate, then he's level next level, and he's going to be good. This is exactly the situation that they've been playing for. Maybe this was the difference in Steric's Gage, but if you could go with something like Zeke's Herald in your fight and you get that spot, then you're going to be okay. But uh, I guess Steric's Gage means that you don't need to have your ultimate, and that's totally fine as well. Whippo with Chef's Kiss. All right, they end up going for the push first, uh, saying that we want to control this area, pick up the buffs for ourselves. We're just going to stick Masu on hit build right here. And very importantly, Seeker's Arm Guard means that he is going to rip through these objectives. Uh, Kaisa with the on hit build is one of the highest 
damage sources in the entire game. Okay, so they say, Kaisa, you can take this. We don't need to do anything else. 7-0 on Kaisa. You think this is going to be a confidence boost for the guy? With a 700 gold bounty on Masu, Gensus, Nashors, Static Shiv, and an unbroken armband. Now, I will say, if I'm a coaching staff, I prepare for a loss just as much as a win here. Yes, we're probably going to win, but if we lose, it has to be about restoring this happy face. Because if we lose, it is likely going to be because Masu punts. And you need to you need to bring him back to say, hey, you're the same guy who got that far. You're the same guy who got us here. You're the same guy who won Rookie of the Year. You're the same guy who got to MSI. All right? We need the best version of you. We don't need you to be anyone else. We need you to be you. Mistakes happen. Don't worry about it. Focus up. Get ready for the next game. Special moments are reserved for special players and special opportunities. And that's what we still have, okay? We still have a chance to be great here. Let's get it done. We need you. But let's not spend any more time for us assuming that it's going to be an L. We don't need to be the coaching staff that's playing for that. It's much more important to do it when you're at two wins, right? You don't ever need to plan for a win if you're a coach. You should always just be thinking about what do I need to do if we need to bring another game. Chovy pulling a Giga Special right now, which is not defending. You spend four people on the defend. You say 5v4, and you go here, and this is the best answer to a 5 for 0 or an all-out push in any direction. This is going to be one-third. As long as this gets down to one-third HP, it's not going to regen. But it looks like he keeps it above, so it'll regen. They get something, but Silas was able to pick up some of that gold for himself. Might even be enough to finish this. Zonia's now team fight great the fact that we still have teleport puts us in a decent position but we should not have had to give anything back to silence when you're the team with the baron you do not need to give anything back especially in that situation where the timer is getting close to three minutes you might want to use your empowered recalls they might have said hey we want to make sure that we get this and we don't want to leave to then have silas come and teleport in behind us uh, you have to trust that you've laid out a good vision line. That's one of the reasons that you need to make sure that you're catching for all teleport wards. It's also why, as a defensive team, you want to set up wards behind you. Look at the vision control in this quadrant, but look at the fact that we have a ward right here. That might just be the uh, scuttle crab. Nope, that's a ward. You see that? You tuck it in some place that seems so asinine that the enemy team would never have any reason to go back and check it. This one will get swept out. This one's nice and defensive. That one's tucked into a nice defensive spot. They say that we can hold this for a long time. We don't We don't need any other action. We can play for the defense here. All right, Bupo going for a big slow. They're not going to be able to chunk him out. That seemed a little bit early for the R, especially with the Sterics gauge going out. And you don't want to be the one who gets the kill. But rotating over and say, hey, look, they defended. They're going to do the same thing that they did last time, which is four defend, one play for the weak side. Try to get one. You're going to go here with five and say, you know what? Let's go back through the fog that we already created in this area and go pick up that kill. Exploitative macro, guys. It's only a matter of seconds. That's what you get. But these games hinge on that difference. We're looking at a 6K gold lead. Crowd starting to go crazy. Um... This is a good moment to talk about another thing. Job of a, of a coach. Set expectations. Not just for how you're going to play as a team, but, hey guys, we're playing in Paris in front of a crowd, and we've got Bwipo and Inspire, two people who have won championships here in front of this crowd. These, these European players, and the fact that we're American as well, we're going to garner a lot of favor. If we go up two games... I expect this crowd to go berserk. Can you still handle your emotions? Make sure that you're taking a deep breath. Make sure that you're taking a towel to your face if you're that tennis player, fixing your strings, spin your racket, and then bring yourself up to your own baseline, not to theirs. Let them go crazy. You have a job to do. You need to go back from that 7,000 RPM acceleration, Come, bring yourself back down to coasting, and bring yourself back up to drive speed. Right, you have to do this process. A good coach will have prepared FlyQuest for this situation. And similarly for Genji, let's face it, you could lose. It's very easy if they skipped FlyQuest and spent their time caring too much about T1's game yesterday. Who couldn't? You want your rematch. You want your chance to beat Faker at the World Championships, especially if you're Chovy. How can I beat Faker? I need to be the best in the world, and the only way I can do that is by beating him. You cared so much about that result yesterday. What about this game right now? 
All right, FlyQuest has the has the engage. Flash forward from the Bwipo, willing to take the fight. That's a Silas stolen uh, Skarnerot, which does deal a decent amount of damage. They should come back, spin back onto the Renekton, trade the Urgot for the Renekton, but the fact that they had to spend extra time means that that's slightly worse for them. But this is okay, one for one. Uh, they'll be respawning. Whipple will have access to his teleport in time. Uh, but with two dragons apiece, how much are they willing to hold in this area? They like how they picked up this blue buff first. Make sure that everyone on the team has access to blue. You just spent a lot of resources, and they just went back. Uh, quad, are you, I mean, can't really be willing to fight this. I like how they're limit testing, though. They're saying, hey, we're the two strongest guys on our team. Inspired can hold down the fort while Quad just rips into them. Very much playing into this as their carry. They said that that's what they were going to do. Their prize is that they they zone Gen G off the mid wave. That's what that play was about. They draw this line of scrimmage. We talked about it before that if one team gives the lane and one team gives the river, you give the dragon, but you get the turret for yourself. That is a fantastic trade, especially when you're ahead. There's one more structure out of the way, one more structure towards your gold lead, and it's on your carry. That gold multiplies itself throughout the entire game. All right, Bwipo flash forward, but Skarner has the correct ultimate right here, so he's going to dash forward and grab everyone else. E4 channels his R while he's already flying in the air. Uh, quad is ripping through them, and the call is to come back and kill the Urgot. Uh, I like that call. Frankly, they probably could have skipped him and repositioned that fight to the top left, right, if you're looking at a clock face, 11 o'clock. By the way, my favorite way to organize shot calling, if you're if you're working with a team, if you're on a team or you're coaching a team, coach with clock face. This is 12, 6, 9, 3, right? 11. Where do you want the fight? Let's fight at 11. Let's fight at 3, 3 o'clock, right? Like, where do we want to position ourselves relative to each other? Because that's all that matters. Where are you relative to each other? Don't get lost in the fight. All right, Busio has his flank position. We see four people outside the pit. FlyQuest said, hey, come bring the fight to us. Genji saying we can go take the pick onto Rakan and try to take the rest of the fight front to back. But Quad is going to be enormous right now. He's just ripping through everybody. You see how he repositions himself behind his tanks? Steps up for a little bit. Ends up getting splashed. What did he die to? Was that red buff? But that damage that they spend going forward means that it's going to be enough. They reposition to get Masu into a good spot. Sejuani's trying to break this wave. They're going to go up top. Uh, they're taking the Baron. Masu can still rip through this. There's only Sejuani here. Uh, Inspired has his smite. So Bwipo's ready to pull through the pit. Do they send Sejuani over? They might They might muse about it for a moment, but really Sejuani's just going to go take a camp, take the scuttle, uh, block this wave, or leave it. No, you know what? You can just leave that for the other guys. Pick up something for yourself. Get yourself strong for the next fight. Okay, that Zonia's was amazing, and then he gets to pop out and press R right away. He dodges the Braum ultimate. So good, Masu! Spray damage. I love how Quad positions himself on the right. You see these guys walking forward. You'd love to see a little bit more extra damage. Yeah, is this just red damage? Jeez. How did that happen? Did Pays E forward early? Lucio thought that he had lost. He's watching that fight with everything. Look at that. Look at those eyes. <laughs> Love the smile, guys. Keep it up. Never change. 10k gold lead. <laughs> They don't need to go for a lateral push. They want to keep front to back because they've got double AD carry, right? So you don't you don't go into side to side with double AD carry. If you do, you end up spreading your resources a little bit too thin. Uh, Genji is going to try to take the, the shot right now. Front to back, you see him repositioning. Ezreal's ripping into them, but there's too much damage from this Zeri. I absolutely love how they flex into an outscaler. This is what we need every single game is to outscale them from mid lane in particular. All right, 10k in inhibs, dragons in one minute, one minute on the Baron. So they can flex, they can go between either. Uh, Genji is happy with either prize. They might decide to give Baron and not fight with a 10k deficit and try to pick up Soul. Hex Soul. Hex. Uh, gives them a chance to come back in the game. But if you're FlyQuest and you pick up the Baron, you just shovel down the lane, right? They have to send someone back to deal with the sack minion waves. Bot lane is going to be slow pushing and stacking, stacking up. Lahen's actually doing his team a little bit of a disfavor there, keeping some of the, the minions alive longer. 
uh, can be a problem because it meant that these minions stayed back further, which meant that his carries didn't have access to the wave. Skarner ultimate again. Uh, we're going to see the same thing. Now, usually you want the top lane dead from this position, not mid, but look at top lane. It's already slow pushing. So because it's slow pushing, they can continue in this position. They can just go front to back, 80 carries. We got what we came for. We step back. Now go look at top lane. Top lane is a 10 versus seven minion wave on the next, all right? And that's enough to actually go and push it to end that game. Someone's going to have to go answer this. They end up pulling back for this dragon saying, we want to go take and control this quadrant. Busio is putting down defensive wards on the other side. So this is a full, like, I want to slow and methodically take advantage of, of everything that's on the map, not give you anything back on the other side. But you know what? I was thinking of, of coincided pushes. This is the length of time left on the Baron. That was not necessary for Busio to come over here. They could have come over to top lane and given the soul and said we can take three inhibs. With three inhibs, we guarantee ourselves the... I mean, basically, that's going to be end of the game anyways. But they say we don't want to give you even the chance that Hex Soul is enough. We'll fight you for that. These are still down. We've got two more waves of supers in the bot lane. They're going to go up, try to break this, play for this strong side. Then we're going to go... Uh, Whippo's going to try to stonewall them here, or Skarner's going to stonewall them then in the jungle, and then they'll come back and play for the Baron from there. Shallow wards to start, all right. Busio's job is to get the first shallow line, then they're going to go for a deep ward here, then you try to tuck something in behind here that's hard for them to spot, and then maybe something on the other side of that wall. Wards that are difficult for the enemy team to clear out that see movement between bushes. You don't necessarily need to see into bushes, you need to see the movements so that you can derive where the fight's going to be and what shape to take. Once you get into a fight, it's the tank's job to get that control ward into, into the bush if there is one, and or the carry to get the far side alteration down right a lot of people think that this far far side alteration is hey check if they're doing baron yes that is something that it does but the most important thing is if we're fighting in fog you light up the fog immediately and you try to give as much vision at the crucial moment where the enemy team kites back into the bush you say light it up and let's keep going that's what the main purpose of it is going to be. Expect Gen G to play for control wards in bushes and try to use bush games to try to set up and overcommit. I don't think FlyQuest is going to do it because they've already shown, they know that their strategy against a team like Liquid is to let it come to us. And since they know that that's a strategy, they're not going to let Gen G do it for free onto them. Spired knows it. Does Busio know it? That's their, that's the out. Busio's had a couple super aggressive positions that could get punished it has been punished before the team has been out on top and they've been doing just enough to win but if he gets caught at this stage in the game you might get that heart rate we saw him die in that last fight and he panicked you could see it in his eyes that was fear i'm watching this i so badly want my team to win but i'm afraid that i've just let them down all right, aggressive positions. They step back. I like the Whipple goes goes backward here. They get a Sejuani ultimate. Not much effect. They're going to continue. They've got the ultimate here. Urga ultimate's a little bit sketch on on Silas. I don't know that he meant to go for that because these some of these other options are much better. Now they come back in, they teleport, they block the, the turret damage. Now this is going to be the commit. If there is one, it's going to be commit right there, right on top of the teleport. They say, no, we're not going to do it. These supers are barreling into the wave. We know that FlyQuest is willing and able to win with super minions. Uh, that's the last one in bot lane. They're going to trade all the pressure, come get the Baron. They're going to cycle back. This is going to respawn. So now it's going to be a matter of patience and setting up a side-to-side -side split push with teleports available uh you don't have ergot's tp which means ergot's going to usher in the mid wave hold on we'll let the rest of this fight go because we're not sure that they get this masu is going to rip through the baron but they might say hey let's go take the fight while they go after this play here we go they got the baron buff big knock up chain cc that's game Lucio's shaking look at this look at this guys the guy this guy's heart rate must be north of 180 if you're a coach, you have to find your player. Give him the pat on the back. And you've done well. Give him that congratulations. We still have stuff to do. We still need you. We just need you. We need the best version of you. Asu. Look at the little eyebrow twitch. Guys, are you hyped? I am hyped. <sighs> Take a deep breath. This is a good moment to remind you guys. Mental health is... is big deal burnout is a big deal make sure that you're building in breaks to your gaming sessions 
when you play these games. The intensity level is high. Whatever your highest intensity is, whether or not it's making it to Diamond for the first time, and you get super hyped about caring about the result, that's what they're feeling here. Whatever your biggest moment is, is what they're feeling here. Picture that in your heart and then multiply it. You want to play best of threes. You want to build in breaks. You want to make sure that you're taking deep breaths every time you go back to Fountain. Every time that you finish your best of three, take a break. It's good for you guys. Take a break. Go outside. Do a chore. Run an errand. Do some exercise. Whatever it is, it's good for your body. You will have prolonged and sustained energy to play longer and better. And it will let you keep a good mindset. So